Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the Week Ahead preview from your friends at Privateer FX. Been kind of out of commission the past few weeks, traveling a lot, and I finally figured out how to record this video from a laptop, which means I can actually travel and do it in the airport or on the fly. So let's get right down to it. Um, not a whole lot out over the weekend. Um, however, I guess the big surprise was uh, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison defied all polls and uh, ended up with winning the election. Uh, the Labour leader, Shorten, conceded defeat. And uh, this was definitely... Definitely a bit of a surprise. You might see a little pop in Aussie. Um, I'm recording kind of right around the Wellington Open, so um, haven't had a chance to see where where prices are. But uh, you know, it's we're in the twilight zone, so I'm not really paying too close attention to it. Um, you know, we still have had the the, the trade China U.S. trade. Obviously, that can has been kicked down the road. Um, I also just read that the Austrian president, Van der Bellen, calls a snap election. Um, we do have elections coming up in Europe, uh, parliamentary elections. Um, so, you know, it's something to, something to keep an eye on. Trump has backtracked a bit on, uh, you know, he's staying, staying tough on China, but basically said he's not going to even address the auto tariffs in Europe and Japan until he can sort out his uh, until he can sort out the China mess so you know I guess that's one good thing for Europe and, and Japan that uh, they don't have the tyrant Donald Trump coming after them um, Yeah, so that's, you know, that should take a little bit of pressure off some of that uh, trade risk. Um, what else do we have here? We're going to take a look at all the charts. And, uh, sorry, I'm just getting distracted here by a couple text messages. Um, why don't we just we'll take a look at the week ahead as far as uh, economic data and on Monday, it looks like we've got uh, – we do have New Zealand Service PMI coming out today. And then um, during the U.S. hours, we have Harker, Williams, Clarida, and then the Bank of England's Broadman are speaking. Uh, Tuesday could be interesting with uh, the minutes from the last RBA meeting as well as a speech from RBA Governor Lowe. Um, so we'll be listening to that. We have a number of speeches coming out of the ECB and Bundesbank members and then some more Fed speak. Um, we got retail sales on Wednesday out of New Zealand. Uh, we have some the Westpac leading indicator number out of Australia, which is the the um, precursor to Australian GDP. Um, we have UK inflation data out, can Canadian retail sales. But Thursday looks like the big day. That's the flash PMI um, data coming out of um, pretty much around the globe um, where you have German, um, all the European data. You also have the, the final reading of the German GDP. We'll be watching that. And uh, some more Fed speak. And then uh, – Friday is pretty much just durable goods out of the U.S. and retail sales out of the U.K. So, you know, we do have some some uh, economic data points to to definitely keep an eye on. Um, just looking through some of my notes here. When we get to the charts, um, we saw here's the Australian dollar. I have a weekly chart up. It's the lowest weekly close, 68.66, lowest weekly close we've seen since back in 2016. Um, you know, again, this a lot of this is just the China 
uh, U.S. trade dispute, trade war, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you know, we're targeting this this low of 2019 on that flash crash. Um, the real low is 60, 67.15, I believe. Um, wasn't down there long, but anyhow, um, you know, most of the charting services have the low coming in somewhere around 67.50. So, you know, that's another 100, 150 some points um, lower. Take a look at the euro. We settled back down. Uh, we did have a bearish engulfing week in euro after some early strength. And uh, this looks like it could probably go down and test that these old weekly lows, which were, uh, you know, just above 111. And, and some of the targets are more like 110.50. So that's your euro. British pound was under some pressure last week. Actually, one of the weaker uh, currencies on the board. Uh, Kiwi, another just you know red bar down. We've had you know four out of the past five weeks down. Another uh, a new low weekly close for 2019 and, and approaching this area here at 64.36, which was the lowest weekly close back in 18. Uh, dollar CAD didn't do a whole lot, uh, marginally higher on the week, um, actually took out the previous week's high by, by a bit. So higher, high, higher, low, uh, but nothing too exciting. Uh, dollar China, this is interesting. Let me rescale this. We are now set a very, very strong week, obviously closed right on the highs up at 690 right around 694.80. And, uh, you know, the highest that we've seen is 698. You know, it feels like, it feels like China is just kind of letting their currency weaken in response and retaliation to, to uh, President Trump's hard line on trade. Um, so this one we'll be, we'll be watching very closely and, you know, be a good risk barometer. Um, going forward. Dollar yen reversal higher week. You know, equity sold off on uh, Monday, then, then rallied for three days and then uh, came off again a bit on, on Friday. But dollar yen kind of hung in there. And uh, let's see, dollar turkey. Dollar turkey obviously had an inside week. Um, you know, we had a, a big big move up to those highs and then closed pretty ugly bar there. So I would say above this high in dollar Turkey of, uh, what is it called? 625 and or below the low at, uh, 594 ish would be the next direction dollar Turkey. Uh, let's see, let's get into some of these yen crosses. How about, uh, let's see what Aussie yen, is doing again new low weekly close no surprise there this thing looks like it has another five big figures in it to get down and test those lows the flash crash all that we saw in january same thing and you know really all these young crosses although cad yen's kind of a doji there yuri yen's still looking a bit heavy australian yen got hammered last week and that was a, you know that was mainly on the back of uh the weaker pound um, let's get into equities. Let's see, equities had a wild, wild ride. We got down to um, in the S and P mini, so you can see. Let me go to the daily, see it better. But you know, we had this this move down on Monday after the threats from between Trump and China, and you know, kind of the negative news flow out of uh on trade last weekend and then it came it, we got down and we tested very important area 2800 it's kind of our target for this sell-off march right back up got back up to a high of 2894 on thursday and then you can see here that you can see this blue this is actually a down bar um you can see that this is a uh an inside bar so 
we'll be playing the break of either side. We still favor the downside. We're still looking for, you know, another test of 2,800 um, before 2,900. And if we do start taking out last week's lows, um, I would look out because I think you're going to see a, a deeper correction. NASDAQ, same type of thing where you had the big down Monday. Here's that red bar and then March tire. And now inside bar on, uh, on Friday. Let's take a look at oil. What's oil doing? Oil's been a, uh, you know, pretty similar to very highly correlated with, with stocks. And, uh, you know, here we had a couple big up days and then a little reversal lower day on on Friday. So we need to watch that. Gold got hit one, two, three, four. It was up on Monday and then just sold off the rest of the week. I have no idea what's going on there. I, I think it has something to do with, you know, as the chi Chinese won weakens, gold is selling off as well. So... It's tough for me to really pay attention to that um, and, and, and find any real, real edge in there. Here's the VIX, you know, the opposite of the S&Ps where we had three, three decent down days. And we had a doji, so this is interesting right here. Closed unchanged on, on uh, Friday. And we still like being selling rallies and risk and looking for deeper corrections. So, you know, this fix, we think can go back and challenge this high of 2340, I believe was a high. Um, I was looking at some of the positioning, um, the CFTC positioning, and noticed that uh, there were, let's see if I can find this, here it is. Taking this from our friend Greg McKenna, who updated that. Euro shorts have, uh, are not quite as large as they were the previous week. Uh, yen shorts dropped by about 30,000, which is, is quite a big, quite a big change. Um, Aussie shorts built a bit, not, not, nothing huge. Um, dollar index was kind of unchanged. Um, crude. Gold actually is kind of interesting. Crude, crude didn't do much. Gold is interesting where gold longs um, were built up, and you can see how that that gold chart, we wasn't looking, had a really tough week. Um, and then the VIX shorts that we've been talking about, the the max, you know, max short VIX, that went from 150,000 short to 90,000 short. That's a big, that's a big change. Um, so you can see last week with, uh, you know, kind of the end of, previous week and then Monday, I suspect that a lot of these VIX shorts um, were covering, um, you know, when we saw the, we saw that big move on the, on the uh, Asian Open, you know, I think S&P's gapped down about 20, 20 points and didn't really recover um, all of the Monday trading session. The other thing that was interesting is the economic surprise index. Uh, we had some huge moves in both China and e and just EM in general, um, China went from two weeks ago was plus thirty nine, and last week's read was minus ten. So that's a forty point. That's a fifty point turnaround. That that's a big move. And then the emerging market um, space went from. Uh, about minus 20 to minus 32, 33. So, you know, I guess that can explain some of this CNH weakness, um, the Aussie weakness. And uh, again, we, but we do think that, uh, we do think China is just kind of letting the one weaken and that's gotta be really pissing off uh, our fearless leader, Donald. Um, so, you know, keep an eye on that seven level, six ninety eight to seven dollar China, um, because if we do break there, we think it's going about six twenty, six thirty in a uh, in short order. And it was interesting. I think it was last week that Kyle Bass has has um, closed out his short CNH 
positions. This guy's been a bear of China for I think he started I think he started preaching about it back in 2015 and he is now no longer short CNH which makes me think that this thing could actually have the move that he's been calling for for four years and you know his timing was pretty shitty and I believe he yeah, I'm sure his investors were pulling money and he probably had a liquid aid to to kind of um, you know close out some of the, some of these positions and, and return some of the investor investor money um, let's talk a little bit more about trade um, I was reading there's a New York Times piece over the weekend how Xi's last minute switch on US China trade deal upended it that's a good piece worth reading um, there was also a uh, China actually canceled the US pork orders amid an escalating trade war China claims that it will not affect their stable pork supplier prices, um, which doesn't sound right. And uh, you know, and then there was a bunch there were a bunch of articles out about Huawei and um, with ZTE. So you know, we're expecting more and more headlines. This is going to carry on. This is going to go on. You know, we got the G twenty meeting supposedly. Trump and G are going to meet, um, but you know that's a, that's about a month away, and I think that it's it's just it's going to be a, a headline trade. Um, G basically said that the trade representatives from the U.S. of Munchen and company aren't really even welcome back to China and back to the table. So this this could carry on right up until the G20 when when G and Trump um, are supposedly meeting. So that's a uh, that's something to, to keep a close eye on because you know this is much further down the road, and uh, and I, we think that'll just be continued uh, you know headline ping pong, which some of us are good at, but. Uh, you know, you have to have a quick, quick trigger finger to really capitalize on it. Uh, the best performing of the, kind of the markets that we follow, the major macro markets, was crude oil last week. It was up about 1.8%. And then the weakest currency, um, now it's pretty close, somewhere between uh, one9 and 2.1% was Aussie and uh, the British pound. So that should do it. Uh, again, not a whole lot out that came out over the weekend, aside from the, the surprise victory by uh, PM Morrison in Australia. So again, I'm doing this video a bit early, and I would keep an eye on Twitter because who knows when Trump's going to start tweeting. All right, well, good luck. You'll hear from us on the European Open, and we will. Uh, I'll speak to you next week. All the best. Cheers.